we're not ready for that one yet. You know, it's kind of weird. Keep thinking we're ready to go to these different places. It makes sense we would be able to. But I'm pretty sure we're probably going to have to go to uh, the Red Cliff, unfortunately. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and go back to the Market District. That way we know we're safe. And just for shits and giggles, we'll go ahead and um, run back to, not run back to, run to the, um, the Arrow of Red Cliff and just see what happens. Good to see you back. I've got complaints in the Nord Noble Tavern that some mercenaries have invaded. Nothing violent has happened. The cell swords are probably just disturbing the nobles of rarefied conversation. Just drum the louts out of there. The barkeep doesn't mind some blood, or sport as she called it. Captain said Denrim won't miss a few dead mercenaries. Do what you will, and good luck. Damn. We are turning him quickly, ain't we? Originally it was don't do anything serious, and now it's do what you gotta do. Magic exists for the third man and never One more body down. Time for us to go ahead and leave Denerim. So, this has been Denerim and the forest. I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, we're probably wanted to leave... Pretty much everything. We'll go to the refugees just because it's in gold. See what happens. Oh, we got into a fight, so first the fight, then the refugees. Oh my! This might not be as much fun as we would like it to be. That wasn't exactly la or exactly lustrous, but we did end up surviving, so I do tend to enjoy just surviving these kind of exploits. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Alright, well, that doesn't surprise me. Refugee camp. Do 
who say? sucks well restart we will restart we must it is begun We must gain the advantage. God damn. All right. Well, unfortunately, we'll have to skip that part. Because apparently. Oh, them enemies. is too much for us. Which kind of sucks, but, you know, hey. We can't really find out what we can do without failing. Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. Well, uh, let's see. How do I tell you this? We're almost at Redcliffe. Did I say how I know Al Eamon exactly? No, you didn't. I'm a bastard. My mother was a serving girl at Redcliffe Castle, and she died when I was born. Al Eamon took me in and raised me before I was sent to the Chantry. The reason he did that was because, well, because my father was King Marek, which made Kaelin my half-brother, I suppose. How? When would I say that? Oh, by the way, King really, whenever you want the servant, she produced a bastard son. That's me. I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. Well, so you're I the bastard. It doesn't really make any difference. Threat to Kalin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. 
Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. You don't think he did that for a reason? I'm sorry. Ah, oh, good. I'm glad. It's not like I got not really. treatment for it anyhow. Al Eamon eventually <laughs> married a woman from Orlais, despite all the problems it caused with the king so soon after the war. He loved her a great deal. Anyway, the new Arlesa resented the rumors which pegged me as the Arl's bastard. They weren't true, but of course they existed. The Arl didn't care. But she did. So off I was packed to the nearest monastery at age ten. Just as well. The Arlesa made sure the castle wasn't a home to me by that point. She despised me. She may have, but I think it's more likely that she feared the rumors might be true. I can't blame her for that. I remember I had an amulet with Andraste's holy symbol on it. The only thing I had of my mother's. I was so furious at being sent away, I tore it off and threw it at the wall. And it shattered. Stupid, stupid thing to do. The Isle came by the monastery a few times to see how I was, but I was stubborn. I hated it there and blamed him for everything. And eventually he just stopped coming. Well, Alistair, I believe that you have a very fucked up childhood, my friend. But that's okay. We will figure it out. Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kaelin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Oh, lovely. I'm going to regret this. Somehow I just know it. Yeah, you will. Unfortunately. I'll make your life shit. Just cause you told me. I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? Oh. Then you don't know. Has nobody out there heard? He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. That doesn't sound very good. Come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Monsters. Everyone's been fighting. And dying. Apparently, everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time huh. to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us, no Arl, and no king to send us help. So many are dead, and those left are terrified. Then, well, next. let's see if we Hold can on. help. What is this evil that's attacking you? I, I, I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Van Tegan, our Lehman's brother. He's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. All right, so we just learned that Alistair is unfortunately an heir to the throne, technically. And that our Eamond might be dead. So we're kind of at a loss right now. But we'll figure it out. Go ahead and listen in. It's Thomas, yes? 
And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainosphere, brother to the Arl. I remember you, Ban Tegan. Though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news! Still alive, yes. Though not for long, if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Caelan risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the king. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. Ah, well, the circumstances are what they are. Problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days. No guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the walking dead, decomposing corpses, returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Caelan dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. There are no darkspawn here, and nothing to gain. It is a fool's errand. Perhaps. How pointless. Thank you, Sven. Six villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Morgan. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than Come you on. can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then. There is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. Of course. I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses, men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the great So skeletons. Undead, spirits possessing the dead. There could be several causes behind such a thing, none of them pleasant. <laughs> Luck be with you, my friend. Thank you, Morgan. I do indeed appreciate you. Blessed art thou who exists in the matrix. Oh, Morgan. Why must you disapprove upon everything? When are the bad men coming? I'm so sorry. Am I bothering you? What are we going to do? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. My, my name's Caitlin, my lord. Uh, pardon my manners, but... You're an elf, aren't you? I mean, that is what you are, right? You're very handsome. I, I never would have... I mean, I didn't expect... <laughs> never mind. Are you going to help us? Everyone says we're going to die tonight. You might. I can't even sleep. I close my eyes, and I see my mother being carried off. What have we done that the Maker allows this to continue? I'm not sure what you all have done. It's my brother, Bevin. He ran off, maybe tried to leave the village. I'm so scared those things got him. 